Drew and T's first stop takes them 250 miles southeast to the heart of London and the doorstep of a sewn masterpiece. So this curtain wall uh, okay. is part, part of the Bank of England, which is right. one of the existing pieces of Sir John Soane's work left. Born in 1753, the fourth son of a bricklayer, Sir John Soane became one of the foremost architects of the Regency era. His inventive use of light, space, and his experimentation with forms of classical architecture earned him possibly his greatest commission, the Bank of England, which he rebuilt and vastly extended over 45 years. This curtain wall is still part of the Sonian original scheme that was put on here. It's one of the Sonian. last surviving. I don't know. I've never heard you say that before. <laughs> <laughs> Just down Threadneedle Street from the Bank of England is Merchant Taylor's Hall, one of the 12 ancient companies known as liveries, which began in medieval times as trade bodies and have grown to be charitable groups. The merchant tailors are planning a clear out, and the boys will be shown around by the company's surveyor, Nigel Gammon. The original hall dates back to around 1300 or just before. It's had numerous additions, got destroyed in the Great Fire of London, and we subsequently got destroyed in the Second World War by incendiary bombs, um, rebuilt in 1957. We mainly run corporate events and functions and weddings and the alike. Again, the whole purpose of that being to support the philanthropy and supporting improving other people's lives. I do know all the, the, all the little cupboards and the, the nooks and crannies that most people don't get to see. Uh, so it should be a great day. 30, I believe. 30, here we go. Hello. Hi. How are, How are you doing? T, oh, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice okay. to meet you. Welcome to the Merchant Tailors Hall. Thank you. Oh. Please go in. Now you're talking. Look at this. Today we are somewhere very grand. We are at the Merchant Tailors Hall. They said, we've got some stuff we want to get rid of. It's going to go to auction. Would you like to have a look at it prior? Yes, we would. Um, the original part of the building is, is the hall, which dates back to 1300. OK, But yeah. then we've had numerous additions, as you can imagine, for an organisation as old as ours. Yeah. 700 years in 2027. 700 wow. years. 700 years. Wow, it's remarkable. You get like a rock style access because they want to take you through all of the different bits of the building to see if there's anything there that you want to buy. And it's just a joy. You pick up things, you learn things, and you get to see and potentially purchase extraordinary items. And I have to now say, blimey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> wow! The original stern badge from our barge. This stern badge from the Merchant Tailor's ceremonial barge dates back to Henry VIII's reign. That's the original That's stone. That's the original stone badge. My God, I didn't know you had that here. I didn't know it still existed. I've been keeping it secret from you. <laughs> what a thing! That's probably the best one I've ever seen. There's never a moment when I'm walking around these buildings that I don't like realise where I am and go, "This is so great." Just everything is just beautiful, incredible. I love this. I've been in some grand buildings on my time, but this is pretty damn good, isn't it? It's wonderful. We are now in the Great Hall. It's pretty great, isn't it? We're on this wonderful gallery they've got all the way around here. Fabulous stained glass windows, fabulous lighting, everything. And then Nigel says, we've got some things around the other side that we want you to have a look at, you want to sell. I'm going to buy something out of the Great Hall here. Great, you know, great. <laughs> and this, this, this some of them here. For the first two. Carpet and the table. Well, the, the desk, I can tell, is there's no great age to the desk, really. The first thing we see, sort of George III revival desk, is just something I'm just have no interest in. But underneath it, there's a rug. I can see straight away, hand knotted, probably 19th century, just this has got the look I really like. It's that faded grandeur, something that was once incredible, still there, hanging by a thread, right? faded and dirty and worn and repaired and torn, and I love it. God, that's faded. My word. The tear is the main thing that, that's the, the biggest issue for me, which devalues it by about 25%. What, what would you be happy with? 600 at a push, but... If I give you 650 for it, is that closer to the mark? Perfect. Yeah? Yep. Fine, we'll take it. Done deal. Thank you very much. 
just imagine you're in the middle of a field at six o'clock in the morning at an antique fair, what are you gonna pay for it? 500 quid. It's great access I've got here, so, you know, and there's still more things to see, so we settle at 650. This is a bit good. Not for sale, I'm afraid, today. Ooh. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> That's Johnson. Is it an original? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God, really? Yes. <laughs> this stunning mirror by 18th century gilder and carver Thomas Johnson features his distinctive style, mostly preserved in engravings from the time and a grand display of his Rococo style. This mirror isn't in the manner of Thomas Johnson. It is a Johnson original. Um, <laughs> it's not often you see them out in the wild. Oh, gives me the shivers. Do we have to drag you away from it? Kicking and screaming. It's all right, screw to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere, somewhere between 80 and 120,000 minimum. Uh, Bonner's valuation has it 120. For a really? For replacement value. <laughs> Get in, there you go. Wow. So now we're heading down to the crypt. The crypt? The crypt. Wow, that, this. this is deep. Whoa. Look at this. Wow. My God. So, yes, now you are in the oldest part of the building, 1327. 1327. <gasps> Look at this. It's got a real presence, hasn't it? It's very cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> so what's down here that you want to get rid of? Those items are going to auction. Um, These are? Yes. Well, hang on a second. One umbrella stand. Can we fl just flip her up? It's in a bad old way, isn't it? Nigel has now brought me down to the crypt, which is the oldest part of the building. It's incredible, you know, it's, a, it's an ancient piece of London. As soon as I walk in, I was like, that's a cracking stick stamp there. <laughs> um, it's only about 120, 130 years old. Uh, it's oak, it's got its original lead-lined drip tray with it as well, and um, it's just got the look, you know? It's just got that look. Suited and booted Victorian city gents would have stored their walking sticks and umbrellas in this stick stand at the entrance to the Merchant Tailors Hall. Made of oak with an original lead-lined pull-out drip tray and could be worth around £800. So th this is going to auction? Yes. With the drip tray? With the drip tray. Has it always been here? It's always been here. Can I give you 120 quid for it? Drew and T are in the heart of the City of London, visiting a livery company, the Merchant Tailors Hall. I've been in some grand buildings on my time, but this is pretty damn good, isn't it? It's wonderful. They're now underground in the almost 700-year-old crypt, and Drew wants a deal on an umbrella and stick stand. Has it always been here? It's always been here. Can I give you 120 quid for it? 120 quid, done. Thank you very much. Pleasure. I have to say, that's lovely. That's really nice. It's actually very good quality, and it's narrow. Some of them can be sort of that wide, which is only maybe six inch wider than that one there now, but they get in the way in the hallway and they, it sort of stops them being sold. Nice narrow one, really good provenance. Bargain at 120. All right, OK, let's see the next bit. Well, it's very that's... close, just next door. Is it? All right, OK. It's into the more modern part of the building, I'm afraid. That's all right. <laughs> so what's in here? This slot. This slot. This? All to go. This would be of interest to me, for sure. Definitely that. That's lovely. In the 18th century, there was a fashion for young, wealthy gentlemen to go on a grand tour, visiting classical Greek and Roman sites around southern Europe to finish their education. Drew's hero, the architect Sir John Soane, won a travelling scholarship from King George III to study classical architecture in Italy in 1778. His time there inspired his neoclassical style. The fashion for travelling to the classical sites continued, and this image, dating to the early 20th century, shows the ancient forum and surrounding temples in Rome. Still in its original frame, this photograph could be worth up to £800. There's models of that section of temple. I've got a grand tour model of that piece. 
this photograph has it all. So it's the site completely open to the public. Life is going on in and around it. There's no fences around it. People are just sat there having a cup of tea and a sandwich in it. It's nothing special. Uh, it's great. I love it. Do you have a price? Make me an offer. 350. It match if you've got the matching part, it's got to be worth 400. <laughs> I do have that model. Wow. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, 400. I'm not going to argue over 50 pounds with you. Yep, that's great. Because I have some of those models, and I'm always dealing in that type of thing, I really want this piece. I love it. Now, the only problem with this is you've got to part me from it. <laughs> it's wonderful. Didn't know what to expect. It's been as much fun as I hoped it would be, but great to actually have sold a few of the items which we were hoping to get rid of anyway. So uh, I win all round, I think. All the money goes to the Merchant Taylors Foundation, which is to improve people's lives through education and philanthropy. So, perfect day. Well, I mean, we get some house calls, but this is quite grand, isn't it? Yeah. This is extraordinary. This has survived and that it's still thriving. Yeah. Um, and doing a lot of good and doing so much good as well. I bought some good things. The stick stand, go through the workshop, Pip will sort that out in the morning. The carpet, I've got a house that we're involved in. That will go in there. And then <laughs> the fantastic photograph. That's amazing. For now, I'm just gonna hang on to it for now. Do you know the van actually automatically goes to your house before the warehouse now? It is a strictly one in, one out policy, so, so, well, it's not. No, it's no, not. It's, no, it's not. I, was, I was waiting for the maths to catch no, it's up. Not, it's not strictly that. Next on the route puts Drew on the trail of his second all-time design hero, Augustus Pugin. Pugin's work, they call him the, the godfather of Gothic because what he did, he got the Gothic um, of, of the medieval period, that design, and then he created the Gothic revival. It was like the Gothic style is a ball and he just rolled it around to suit whichever piece he needed at that time that he not only understands it he can reinvent it and use it to his in any advantage in any situation in any architectural form and then relate that to floors
Peter Hall here, great, you know, great. <laughs> and this, 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 some of them here. For, for the first two, carpet and the table. Well, the, the desk, I can tell, is there's no great age to the desk, really. The first thing we see, sort of George III revival desk, is just something I'm just have no interest in. But underneath it, there's a rug. I can see straight away, hand knotted, probably 19th century, just this has got the look I really like. It's that faded grandeur. Something that was once incredible. Still there, hanging by a thread, right? Faded and dirty and worn and repaired and torn. And I love it. God, that's faded. My word. The tear is the main thing that, that's the, the biggest issue for me, which devalues it by about 25%. What, what would you be happy with? 600 at a push, but... If I give you 650 for it, is that closer to the mark? Perfect. Yeah? Yep. Fine, we'll take it. Done deal. Thank you very much. Just imagine you're in the middle of a field at 6 o'clock in the morning at an antique fair. What are you going to pay for it? 500 quid. It's great access I've got here, so, you know, and there's still more things to see, so we settle at 650. This is a bit good. It's not for sale, I'm afraid, today. Ooh! <laughs> what is it? <laughs> That's Johnson. Is it an original? Yeah.